Hi everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel of Reader A Club. Today's video is not the usual kind and that's not because I'm talking about Either Or by Soren Kierkegaard. Uh, this video is slightly different in terms of format even uh, that's because I've decided to dedicate one video uh, to each chapter from the book and uh, so this video is actually the first of the many that are to come in the series of uh, Soren Kierkegaard's Either Or. Now let me tell you why I'm making a separate video on each chapter from the book so you know as someone who has uh, never read philosophers like Kierkegaard, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, Simone Weil, um, Arthur Schopenhauer so you know when uh, reading their work sometimes most times actually can be very intimidating so what I'm trying to do with these series of videos is uh, break down the structure, theme uh, and content of the book so it becomes in that way I hope it becomes easier for uh, avid readers to uh, select such complex books and maybe even be able to understand them better. Now before I start uh, talking about the first chapter of Either Or let me share with you that I have read The Sickness Unto Death as well which uh, there's just no denying that I truly loved and to be honest while I was reading either or I was quite grateful for having read The Sickness Unto Death first and you know it's not because there's any connection per se but you know the philosophy is pretty much the same and once you've read a slightly more simplified version of this sort of philosophy and writing uh, it becomes easier and um, and you know less um, for the lack of a better word mind-boggling to take on such uh, you know such difficult stuff okay so let's talk about the first chapter uh, in part one of uh, Soren Kierkegaard's Either Or and uh, if you don't already know then uh, Soren Kierkegaard is actually known as the founder of existentialism and um, his most poetic lines mark the beginning of the first chapter. What is a poet? an unhappy man who hides deep anguish in his heart but whose lips are so formed that when the sigh and cry pass through them it sounds like lovely music and people flock around the poet and say sing again soon that is may new sufferings torment your soul but your lips be fashioned as before for the cry would only frighten us but the music that is blissful and the critics come forward and say that's the way that's how the rules of aesthetics say it should be done of course a critic resembles a poet to a hair except he has no anguish in his heart no music on his lips so I tell you I would rather be a swine herd and be understood by the swine than a poet and misunderstood by people in this chapter the first thing that I could relate to was uh, when he mentions uh, on page 45 that he has the courage to fight everything he has the courage to doubt everything but he does not have the courage to own or know anything and for me that was uh, a deeply profound moment and you know it's moments like these that encourage me to read more and uh, then he moves on to talk about the ridiculous things in the world uh, being busy being quick to your meals being being quick to your work and and you know just being a busy botcher so uh, what are we trying to achieve in such haste and hurry what else do we wish to salvage from the great fire of life life was a bitter drink to Kierkegaard as it is to most of us yet we must take it in drops one by one 
I believe that the more we try to make it less bitter, the more wretched our existence becomes. He believed that contemplating life's glory is the most tragic and gloomy thing one can do. There is no meaning to life. We can work for a living, but that can't be the meaning. Uh, to Kierkegaard, real pleasure lies in the mind and not in all the external, you know, goals and external conditions that we're all trying so like we're striving so hard to achieve all i see is emptiness all i live on is emptiness all i move in is emptiness my soul is like the dead sea over which no bird can fly when it gets halfway it sinks down spent to its death and destruction I memorize these lines because I believe there's just so much, so much practical wisdom in that, you know. Uh, I mean, how many things do we do in a day that are empty at their very core? I mean, yes, distractions and diversions are how we go from one day to the next, but, you know, can we get away from all that if or whenever we we wanted to. I often ask myself, can I get by the opposite of uh, or even be happy or be okay with the opposite of what is uh, handed to me today or you know the opposite of the opportunities that I have at my disposal right now. This can give rise to a lot of anxiety because of unresolved wounds and insecurities but Kierkegaard in this chapter says that if he were ever to wish for anything, it would be for the passion of the possible and not wealth and power because pleasure disappoints but possibility doesn't. And this is what the first chapter is all about. In case you're wondering, that was existentialism in all its fame and glory. So you see there's a lot more territory for me to cover in these videos because this was just the first chapter in part one of the book. I hope you follow through with uh, the rest of the book. I will be uploading uh, the videos one by one. Uh, these may be spaced out over time but I genuinely intend on finishing the whole series of either or because Kierkegaard's work to be honest with you is very it's very close to my heart. It has taught me so much about my flawed thinking and about the way I perceive everything outside me and in fact inside my head. And this revelation ought to be shared. So I hope you uh, liked the initiative and, uh, and the video. Do let me know what you think about Kierkegaard or any other thoughts you may have. Thank you so much for watching.